was an engineer. Uh, I was an engineer because, not because of my high SAT or math scores, I was an engineer because my parents noticed that I took everything apart and put it back together. Actually, I didn't always put it back together <laughs> at first, but I got there. I was telling the teachers a couple weeks ago that when we cleaned out my late mother's thing, she had a couple of mechanical toys from 50-some years ago that didn't get back together, but I, I thought it was quite charming that she held on to them all these years. I was a businessman. Um, I worked in defense. I built parts for uh, a number of things, satellites, airplanes, uh, <coughs> things that uh, fought and flew. Built computers, including supercomputers. My forte was uh, cryogenic cooling. I know a fair bit about liquid natural gas and liquid uh, CO2 and liquid nitrogen, which is sort of an interesting line of work. I built electronics on uh, three continents of all kinds. I worked in heavy industry. Uh, the last seven years here, seven and a half years here in Colorado, I worked for Barbara Nichols Aerospace in Arvada and built many interesting products, including they cut the first ten turbines for Elon Musk and SpaceX. At the time, we thought the idea of this uh, quiet guy, and Elon Musk for me is very, was a very nice, approachable man. The idea of going commercial to space seemed a little far-fetched, but we built his turbines. And we knew, we knew him before he was famous. I, I did a lot of education work before I was an educator. I just didn't realize at the time. Because wherever we went, we didn't, didn't just expect <coughs> employees to know what to do. We built systems. We trained them. We studied the best companies. And all the best companies had training programs. In fact, it was in the way they breathed. It was in the water coolers. They trained their employees. So in... America, in Mexico, in South America, and in the Orient, we didn't expect people to know how to build good products. We trained them to build good products of good quality. So I actually became an educator before I really realized it. I earned a reputation in business as a turnaround guy to say we believe that the essence of greatness is in almost any organization. We believe that the essence of success is present almost always. But in the industry, we learned uh, coming out of the late 70s that you don't just start over, you, you turn things around. And we studied the best to be the best. Some fun facts about Rob Stanner. I was a pretty good oboe player. I was also a pretty good boxer. I think they're probably related. One was compensating for the other, or vice versa. Don't really know. I uh, once went to China. In fact, the first time I went to China was on 36 hours notice. In graduate school, I studied the former Soviet Union in Eastern Europe. Never really been. I always <coughs> tell my students, you don't know what you're going to be prepared for. In fact, the way you react for what you're not prepared for is what you're going to be judged on. After I got, after 9-11, I got an itch to do something, to do some service, do something besides just make things. I was lucky enough to enter the leadership program at Denver University. At that time, non-traditional school leaders were unusual and they were very open-minded. I appreciated that because, oh my goodness, what an education. There have been many moments in my life that stick the day you graduated from high school, college, uh, the day I reported to the Citadel in South Carolina. The first day the bell rang at 8.05 and my eighth graders filed in. That was a moment. Nobody knows about teaching until you've done it. A couple of years ago, I was asked to write down my philosophy of education. And it's, it's just a single page, but it comes from the heart, and I wanted to quickly read it to you. Unlike most of my friends in education, I never wanted to be a teacher when I was young. Although I clearly remember several elementary and secondary teachers and one principal who had a positive and lasting relationship on me, my public school experience growing up in Los Angeles in the 60s and early 70s was at best neutral and at worst disheartening. 
I first began to appreciate the importance and variability of American education when, as a freshman college student, I found the leap to college work from high school to be painfully steep. However, not all my fellow students struggled to the same degree that I did. In engineering school, you get to know your fellow students well because you spend very long hours in many projects that are they're team-based, they're collaborative, so you have a very good read on your individual abilities. I learned that other students who were my intellectual peers, or even less, had a decided advantage over me that derived from the quality of their K-12 education. To make a long story short, I learned that where you got your education in public education was the most important <coughs> factor for success in college. More important than what classes you had taken, or even how smart you were. In addition, years of business experience has taught me that public schools not only sometimes fail to prepare students for college, they also frequently fail to prepare students for life. I believe this experience makes me a credible guide and advocate for students whether they intend to go on to a traditional college or not. I believe there are two goals for education in this country, to improve students' performance in general and to make that performance more consistent from district to district and state to state. I believe that students need to learn to succeed, but more importantly, they need to learn to fail. By learning to fail, I mean that students need to treat failure as an intermediate step on the path to success, obstacles that are inevitable in education as they are in life. The attitude one adopts about obstacles is critical to your ultimate success or failure. The biographies of successful men and women in business are replete with people who failed repeatedly but kept trying until they succeeded. I pass this perspective on to my students. I believe in measurement. In business, we used to say, what get me gets measured gets done. Only by constantly measuring our performance and methods can we improve. I believe the same is true in education. We may dislike it standardized testing and other tests at time, but testing is here to stay, and those who accept testing as a valuable tool will be in the best position to thrive in the years to come. I believe in balance in the classroom, a constant changing mix of rigidity, rigidity and flexibility, listening and laughter. I'm a bit of a disciplinarian, although I have a soft diplomatic touch that emphasizes positive outcomes. I believe in nurturing self-confidence in students is just as important as developing reading comprehension or math skills. Simultaneously, I believe in hard work. Learning is often the result of practice, practice, and more practice. <coughs> I believe in teamwork. Learning can frequently be fun, but learning is necessary whether it is fun or not. Only by working closely with students, parents, and staff can all the difficulties in the educational process be minimized and the benefits for our students be optimized. Right now in this building, I am concentrating on the fundamentals. The fundamentals and fundamentals, filling gaps and strengthening existing systems. In the weeks to come, I will be strongly involved in the planning process for next year and beyond. But my focus at this moment is the fundamentals. Blocking and tackling, conventional wisdom, best practices, things that we know work in other buildings, things that our, our good teachers and staff have used successfully, we're simply installing when we find an opening. Again, it's my pleasure to be here. I would be very happy to answer any questions you might have this evening.